iPhone battery capacity has been making big jumps lately. From 2015 to 2017, the iPhone model batteries stayed in the 10.3 to 11.1 watt hours range. But starting with the iPhone XX Max and now the iPhone 11 Pro Max, battery capacity trends have broken out of that range. The iPhone XX Max reached 12.1 watt hours, while the iPhone 11 Pro Max added another 25% on top of that reaching a massive 15 watt hours. This is almost 50% higher than the 2017 iPhone 8 Plus and close to that of the original Apple iPad mini. To keep up with the battery capacity increases, Apple also started to include an 18 watt PD charger with phones like the iPhone 11 Pro Max, replacing the previous Apple 5 watt USB power adapter that have been pervasive in previous models. Note though that the iPhone 11, unlike the Pro versions released the same year, also came with a 5 watt charger. The Apple 18 watt PD charger is able to fill the phone's battery at three times the rate of the Apple 5 watt USB power adapter during the initial fast charging stage of the iPhone 11 Pro Max. For bigger batteries, this fast charging is essential to filling up the battery within a reasonable time period. We can see how Apple is taking advantage of USB power delivery's higher wattage capacity to keep down overall charging times. In fact, there is an exact relationship between how much the iPhone 11 Pro Max's maximum charging power has increased with how much the battery capacity has increased over the iPhone XX Max. The iPhone 11 Pro Max max charging power is 22.5 watts, which is 25% higher than the 18 watts max charging power found in the iPhone XX Max. This aligns with the iPhone 11 Pro Max battery capacity of 15 watt hours, which is 25% higher than the 12 watt hour battery capacity found in the iPhone XX Max. Since the iPhone 11 Pro Max only ships with an Apple 18 watt PD charger, you need a higher wattage USB power delivery charger to take advantage of the 22.5 watts max charger. Let's first take a closer look at how the iPhone 11 Pro Max uses USB power delivery technology to achieve faster charging. We use the GRL C2 USB PD tester and the GRL PSP Power Analyzer software from Granite River Labs to analyze the details of how the iPhone 11 Pro Max works with the Apple 18 watt PD charger. When the iPhone 11 Pro Max is first connected to the Apple 18 watt PD charger, the charger detects RD resistance levels from the iPhone CC line and increases the VBUS voltage to 5 volts. While the iPhone starts to initially load some current, more importantly, a series of complex handshakes are done over the USB power delivery standard. The charger first advertises it can support two power profiles, 15 watts, which is 5 volts at 3 amps, and 18 watts, which is 9 volts at 2 amps, using USB PD 2.0 standard rather than the USB PD 3.0 standard which Samsung is using. After an initial 5 volt power contract is established, the charger sends a series of discovery requests to learn more about the iPhone it is connected to. The iPhone responds to these requests by stating its vendor ID, product ID, and listing a specific special vendor ID used in USB-C alternate modes. Apple also defined its own USB-C alternate mode which the iPhone then enters during the USB PD protocol exchange. Once in the USB-C alternate mode, the vendor-defined messages are used for internal communication between the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the Apple 18 watt PD charger. After a lot of vendor-defined messages, the iPhone stops drawing current from the charger and proceeds to request the second PDO power profile of 9 volts at 2 amps offered by the charger. After the PS Ready, the power contract is established 
add a new VBUS voltage, and VBUS voltage increases from 5 volts to 9 volts. Once VBUS voltage has reached 9 volts, the phone increases the VBUS current load up to close to 2 amps to charge the battery. Now after learning about the USB power delivery technology details, let's use the GRL C2 USB PD tester and the GRL PSP power analyzer software from Grand River Labs to look at the big picture and analyze the overall charging of the iPhone 11 Pro Max. First, we drain the iPhone 11 Pro Max to zero battery charge, and with the phone turned off, connected the Apple 11 watt PD charger. Note that the iPhone 11 Pro Max will automatically turn on. The iPhone 11 Pro Max initially goes into a preconditioning mode at 13.5 watts at 5 volts fixed voltage for a couple of minutes. The phone then proceeds to an initial fast charge mode where it charges at 17.5 watts at 9 volts fixed voltage for about 30 minutes, after which temperature rises by 17 degrees Celsius. The phone proceeds to a cool down mode where power is gradually reduced by 5 watts to a 13 watt plateau and then gradually reduced by 6 watts to a 7 watt level with more current volatility. Finally, the phone enters a saturation mode at which point the phone's battery voltage is already at the highest level and current gradually gets lowered to close to zero until the phone's battery is 100% full. Now let's look at how the iPhone 11 Pro Max changes its charging behavior dramatically while the display and Wi-Fi are left active without the display going to sleep. Again, we use the iPhone's own 18 watt charger and keep the phone drained to 2% to allow communication between the GRL PowerSuite Pro and the phone. This time, the iPhone 11 Pro Max stays in the fast charge mode for longer, where it charges at 17.5 watts at 9 volts fixed voltage for about 48 minutes to achieve 70% battery charge and again a temperature rise of 17 degrees Celsius. The iPhone 11 Pro Max's subsequent cooldown mode is very aggressive, where charging power gradually drops to 10 watts, but then suddenly drops to under 2 watts for about 15 minutes when the phone's battery percentage reaches 80%. Interestingly enough, during this 15 minutes, the battery percentage stays at 80%. The phone then changes the charging fixed voltage level from 9 volts to 5 volts, resulting in a momentary current spike, after which the battery percentage starts rising again. Finally, the phone enters the saturation mode, where current gradually gets lowered from 7 watts to close to zero, until the phone's battery is 100% full. Using the GRL PSP Power Analyzer software, we directly compare the charging behavior between the phone being off versus display on. As expected, the phone generally charges at a higher power level for longer periods of time while the display is on, except for the 15 minutes where the battery charge level stays at 80%. This break of 15 minutes somewhat helps to equalize the total charging time to 100% between both phone off and display on cases. Note there is a lot more charging current volatility seen while the display is on. We then ran the same analysis using the Apple 30 watt USB-C power adapter as well as the ABL Chroma 30 watt USB PD and QC power module. Using the 30 watt charger, the overall max charging now has risen to 22.5 watts during the initial fast charge phase with a resulting higher temperature increase of 23 degrees Celsius versus 17.5 watts and increase of 70 degrees Celsius observed when using the 18 watt charger. When the phone is kept on, display and Wi-Fi active, the max power also goes to 22.5 watts during the initial fast charge phase. And after some time, there is a higher current variability where power then swings frequently between 18 watts and 22.5 watts using the 30 watt charger. 
Comparing the 18 watt versus 30 watt chargers on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, we can definitely see that the 22.5 watt max power charging using the 30 watt charger does result in somewhat faster charging initially and saves five minutes to reach 80% battery charge. However, due to the aggressive cooldown behavior and long battery saturation charging times, both chargers achieve 100% charging at close to the same time. Note the iPhone 11 Pro Max has similar charging behavior for different greater than 24 watt chargers that support USB power delivery. For example, the Belkin 27 watt QC4 Plus power adapter shows the same iPhone 11 Pro Max charging profile as the ABL Chroma 30 watt USB PD and QC power module. It's also interesting to look at the iPhone 11 Pro Max discharging behavior. After charging the phone to 100%, we discharge the phone with the display and Wi-Fi kept active. Interestingly, even though the discharge rate doesn't seem to change, the iPhone 11 Pro Max stays at 100% battery charge for about 20 minutes before finally fully discharging after about 16 hours. If we repeat this discharging exercise while AirPlay is being used, we can see that the higher rate of power consumption associated with AirPlay reduces how long the battery can be used by about 40%. The iPhone 11 Pro Max is part of a larger trend in 2019 for smartphone displays and batteries to get larger, and max charging rates move from a 15 to 22.5 watt range to a higher 22.5 to 27 watt range seen in competing phones like the Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus, Xiaomi Mi 9 Pro, and Huawei Mate 30 Pro. If these trends continue, we may see even higher max power charging rates over time.